A very good morning to you, Crafty Nuts. So today we are troubleshooting. Um, we had a few questions asking how to finish, how to start um, different things, different projects, what we've done in the past. So we're just sort of just going to go over and give you some top tips on there. I hope everybody's all right. I'm so happy today because finally um, the heat wave, what Sarah's been promising us for the last, last four weeks is here and it's really nice and warm out there. Very, very sunny. Um, where I am. I'm hoping to do some beading or um, knitting or something a little bit later in the garden or we might even wander down to the beach if it's not too busy at lunchtime with Lucy and just um, take a couple of chairs down and we just sit on the beach. I do need to finish the um, a cover for the pillow for you know who and um, I can take that down with me and just do it. Good morning Joe, Diana, Edward, Carol, um, Marilyn, uh, Rachel, oh, there's so many of you lovelies are here already. I'm going to turn you down and we're going to crack on now. If you've got any questions, what you want to ask or what you want to know about it, if I have it here in my um, craft room, then I can go and grab it and show it to you. Um, if not, then I will put it on the list and I, we will cover it next week or the week after when we're doing another session. So we had quite a lot of questions. Let me just turn you down at the same time. Um, oh, morning, Margaret, Annie, Sam, Alicia, Rachel, Marilyn, Carol, Edward, Diana, Doris. Um, just turning you down. There we go. For some reason, it's turned the, no, the light on. Is it? No, it's fine. Cool. Good morning, Francis, Lucy, Debbie, Sophia, LJ, Alison. Alison is saying, morning all. We'll have to watch later, but think this will be a good session. Right, so we're going to start off with the double row flat spiral. Now, this one, one asked by Annie, I think. Sorry, um, I'm so bad with names. I don't, uh, I never remember names. Um, but basically, she started, uh, let me just show you some finished samples. So she started this lovely, lovely weave. And she's got to one end, attached the clasp, and that's where we stopped the tutorial last time because you sort of just repeat it on the other side, but I didn't really cover it, how you turn around and continue on to the other side as well. This comes in many, many different colors. So um, I think Simon is watching this morning. He's gonna be doing the comments. So can we have a link for these if you fancy any of these because I just love you create a fabric-like texture with beads. Um, a lot of people done the single row flat spiral, but this one is the double version of it. I've got a single row one here, the one we did, um, the rainbow one. So this is a single row one, and then we continued on to the double row one, which is a really nice, very elegant wear as well. So it comes in many, many different colors. I've got so many samples, but um, I do wear them quite a lot because I, I just really love them. They just gives you that tiny bit of sparkle and the pearls are so elegant. Very easy weave. Right, let me just get these out of the way. Right, so in the previous tutorial, um, Lucy's saying she's done a single one so far. Um, it's not much more difficult to do the double one and I will show you how. We're going to do a couple of steps going the other way so you can actually see how the stitch itself is going to be constructed. Morning Jenny, morning Camille. Camille saying it's a bit late, done very lovely, we just started so you are right on time. Good morning Francis. And um, yeah, sorry, I just flipped my laptop on and the sand came on and it's just throwing me out a little bit. Right, so um, as the previous video, which we're going to give you the link just in a minute, we started with one row of this spiral and then we came with another separate piece of thread and joined the second row of the spiral, got to the end where the clasp bit is and attached the clasp. Now, I think that how you attach your clasps... Um, does like you know is something can be look like more professional if it's like really nice and neat finish or it can really let you down if you don't connect it the right way um but it's quite easy that was covered in a previous video as well so um 
we got to this part, we did the end, then we attached the clasp, we came back down on our beads, um, just did a couple of half hitch knot and tied our threads off. And then what you need to do to continue your work, you're gonna flip your bracelet over just like that, because if you see on the other side is exactly the same how we were doing our weaving when we were doing this stitch. So to continue it, um, I didn't, I, I, when I started, my bobbin was right here and I didn't cut the thread off because I, now when I'm going back on myself to the other side, I can take more thread off the bobbin and just attach a needle to it. So basically the whole um, piece of your bracelet is going to be, well, it's made up of a couple of strands, but they're not, not, don't need to join any more thread. It's already all there. Diane is saying, um, same here, um, bang already add together. Um, good morning, everyone. Warm invest a low TN today, but only for today. Um, good morning, Bern Bernie, Paula. Jill saying, still can't master it, so have a good little look. I'm going to show you. Um, Blorn is saying, morning, Kitty and Sarah and everyone. Morning, GT, Carol and Tita. I just don't want to miss any of your comments because I haven't got um, one of my... Molly help Molly helps me out and um, she reads the comments out so I don't have to when she's with me I don't have to worry about it so much but today she's at the warehouse and I'm working from home so um just trying to you know trying to have all the comments there right so we're going to do the same thing what you did on the other side um we got both of our threads both of the threads are long so we can but once in one row and then we're going to come and catch up with the other row. So we're going to need some pearls. So we just flip the bracelet over as we had it. We're going to need some seed beads. And we're going to need a few crystals. Right, so I'm going to step up. So I'm going to pick up one pearl and let this pearl go all the way down. Then I'm going to pick up my pattern, which is four seed beads, a crystal bead, and four seed beads. Then I'm going to go through the pearl, which is already on my bracelet, and the one I just added. just like that, both of them, and pull this up through. So we are creating these little loops around our pearls. So I like, to, you always have to make sure you're gonna have two loops that one flaps one way and the other loop which you're gonna add is flaps the other way. So I'm gonna pick up another four seed beads, another crystal, and another four seed beads. And again, I'm gonna come through both of those pearl beads. So I'm creating my second loop and I want to make sure one loop flaps one way and the other loop flaps the other way. Now we are ready to step up. So I'm going to pick up another pearl and repeat the same process, picking up my four seed bead, crystal and four seed bead. I'm just going to do a couple of steps here and then we're going to go on to the other strand. Oh, Marie is saying it's horrible in Ireland. Oh, I'm so sorry. I think you're just so happy here that finally we got a little bit of good weather. And again, I'm gonna repeat, adding a loop to the other side by picking up four seed beads, a crystal, and another four seed bead. And then I'm gonna go through both of those pearls and pull this up tight. I like to hold my thumb on the top of my work when I'm pulling it, so straight away, my loop is gonna go to the side when I need it to go. So once you have, let's add one more, so we've got a little bit of a gap. One more pearl. Diane is saying, due to be 30 here in Greater Manchester, 
I don't know. I, I did look at the weather report. It said it's going to be 31 here in Frinton on sea. And then I did ask Alexa. And Alexa always said that it's going to be 23. So we will see. I think that might be in shade and sunshine, the temperature difference. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that we got a bit of a nice weather. I love really nice and hot weather. And especially in the evenings when you sit outside on a veranda and it's really nice and warm and um, you're still sitting in your t-shirts and just it just feels right. I think it's, it gives you like a little bit of a buzz in the air. Right, so I'm just going to go through these two. So that's it. So I'm going to continue with this pattern all the way down until you have your desired length. Now, don't forget, when you're adding your clasp on this side, you're still going to need to add one more pearl. So factor that in when you add your clasp. And quite simply, on the other side, we're going to do very similar thing, but we're going to stitch into the crystal, which is right in the middle. So I'm going to pick up a pearl to the step up so I changed I got a needle on this side already um Julie's asking is Frinton or near you kitty um yes so I'm I'm in Frinton at the moment we live in Frinton but the warehouse is in Clacton so we are they say this is the sunshine coast I don't know where I read it it's quite silly but um we do well we do get very varied weather so i picked up the pearl i picked up another four seed bead a crystal and another four seed beads and i'm gonna go through the two pearls the one which is already on my bracelet and the one i just picked up um helen is saying no wonder you love the beach frinton is lovely oh yes we got a really nice sandy beach i really do love it i love a sandy beach but um, days like this, I bet you it will be really busy down there. So we added one loop. And now on the other side, we're going to connect up with this crystal, which is already on the bracelet. So I'm just going to pick up four seed beads. Going to come through that crystal, the next crystal on the next loop, which is not connected. Just going to come back down on it just like that then i'm going to pick up another four seed bead and i'm going to go up through both of those pearls and that's it that's how you continue your weave to the other side and once you get your desired length you're just going to connect and have you connected in a previous video when we did it just going to add another pearl and repeat it again so i'm going to first i'm going to pick up my normal pattern which is four seed beads a crystal and another four seed bead and i'm going to come through the pearl which is already on my bracelet and the pearl i just added come through both of them And then I'm seeing we are back in partial lockdown, no visiting relatives and friends, but pubs and restaurants open. Um, I guess that you are near Manchester area then somewhere there. Um, right, so added one loop and now I'm going to connect up, I just need a few more seed beads here. And I'm going to come pick up four seed beads. I'm going to come down on the next crystal on the next loop which is not connected together yet now you could do three four five six rows with this technique you're just connecting more of your lovely weave to it make it even smaller if you worked with even smaller beads it would look really really gorgeous i think it's such a simple pattern picked up another four seed beads and i'm going through the two pearls again and pull it up tight that's it and i'm going to do the last one so i connect this last one up for you as well just one more time i'm going to pick up a pearl pull it all the way down then i'm going to pick up my normal pattern which is four seed beads a crystal 
and another four seed beads. And go through both of the pearls. The one which is on my bracelet and the one I just added. Mina is saying Lester has come out of lockdown. I think this is going to be stop and start for the rest of the year for all of us. Picked up four seed beads. I'm going to come down this crystal here to connect this last loop. Pull this up and pick up another four seed beads. And go right up. So that's really how easy is to continue the other way so don't forget when you're doing your spiral um you're gonna continue one side and then you need to flip your bracelet over completely because that's how your pattern goes that's how the loops um goes um sort of on top of each other and um just continue doing them until you get to the end um i'm just gonna um See, has Simon added um, the links for us yet? Or Molly, if you're watching, please um, give us a link for the previous um, Facebook Live video or the products itself because that's got um, the link at the top so we, that will show you how to start and how to add your class. And I hope you answered your question that this is really how easy it is. And sometimes you sort of don't think about it that all you need to do is just flip your bracelet off and you're going to start with one strand and then you're going to work with the other strand bringing your beading together. But that's it. It's a really pretty weave. If you haven't tried it, do try it because it's really forgiving. Um, you're creating a really lovely fabric, very fluid texture and... Um, it's really enjoyable to do. Oh, Freddy is back. I got Freddy the fly in the office. I did open the windows wide open for him this morning to fly out, but I think he liked it inside so much. So he's flying around at the moment. Right, so um, once you finished your bracelet, don't forget to do a little decoration row right at the end so you get a nice and neat finish. And that's it really. Um, I hope that's answered your question. Um, what you wanted to know about the flat spiral, how to continue on to the other side. Um, really, really easy. If you've got any more questions about it, do let us know. And we can always sort of uh, bring back and do another little um, video. It's not a problem at all. Let me just keep these beads down to the side. Right, now next question, and I'm really sorry I forget uh, I forgot the name, um, was it Jane? Um, who asked about how to start the Russian spiral one and how to attach the clasp, how to do the little end right at the end. So Russian spirals, again, they come in so many different, um, you could do any different combination, any different color. You could even take it further a little bit and do three different colors of the um, bugle beads in there. So it's made up of Delica beads and bugle beads, three millimeter Toho bugle beads it's a really lovely pattern very easy to do pattern repeat all the way along as long as you start your beading right again what I do I leave the bobbin on and then you can go go and do the whole piece of um, bracelet in one thread because you can take more thread off the bobbin and continue our beading to the other side now you can attach all sorts of different clasps as you can see some of them's got magnetic clasps they're sticking together a little bit. Some of them has got um, a little lobster clasp with a, a closed ring on. It's really, a, this one has got, no, that's a lobster clasp as well. I thought some one of them had a toggle clasp one. I got so many different lovely samples here. I love this stitch. I did so many different variations. Um, very easy. Right, let me show you how to start and how to add your clasp. Now, I choose an... Um, this sort of clear color and I chosen a blue to go on the side so hopefully you can really see the two colors as they are forming and the stitch how we're doing it so I'm going to take my thread I add a needle onto it I'm going to pull this down a little bit more and um, I'm going to pull 
I'm going to leave the bobbin just there. So the right hair you need to pick up, you're going to pick up one Delica, one Toho, two Delicas, another Toho Bugle, another two Delicas, and another Toho Bugle. And this is how you start. That's your starting pattern. Now I'm going to pull this all the way down. I'm then seeing is the Russian spiral through with elastic. I'm having trouble adding together with elastic. I'll I'll do that as well. Um, I can't do that today because I need to bead up a um, size sort of a bracelet size um, beading so I can join it here on the live video for you. But that's that's on the list as well. Um, somebody else is asking as well, so I already put that on there. Um, Alicia's saying the Russian spiral was so addictive, I almost made it too long. Oh, bless. Right, so I added my pattern on. I'm going to come back through. I uh, sort of just loop it around because I want to come back through all of those beads to form my little circle. Now, I'm not going to knot my beginning and tail together because if I do that, it will stop me to go through the beads again at a later date. So sometimes we can get away by knotting the thread and the tail end together and forming a really nice and strong um, base, I guess. But if you want to go back through that bead again, the knot can sink into it. So this time we knot. So I got all the way around and I'm going to come through the first of that... Um, that one bead again right so now it doesn't matter what way you're going to travel so if you're going to travel clockwise or if you're going to travel anti-clockwise as long as you're going to keep traveling into the same direction and all we're going to do we're going to pick up a one little delicate bead and one bugle bead and we're going to miss in reverse what we picked up so i'm going to miss the toho bugle bead and the delica bead and go through the second little delica bead there now what i like to do i like to hold um my thumb right on the top of my beadwork to make sure these are just going to be flat just for the first round until i pull them together because this little loop we just added it can flap top to the bottom and it can be a little bit um confusing when you get down to the third stitch how to join up however once you joined it up it's going to be nice and easy to go and bead around now other things you could do you could insert a like a chopstick or a skewer or something or, or a small um crochet hook or something inside it so you can keep and you've got something to hold on to until you do your first few stitches so i'm keep picking up the same thing one delicate bead one bugle bead i'm going to miss the bugle bead and the delicate bead and i'm going to go through the next delicate bead as i go along and i just got around i'm going to pull this up tight and now i'm just going to keep going around doing the same thing so picking up one delica one bugle missing in reverse what i just picked up and going through the next delica bead now just going to do a few stitches so we got enough to see i'm going to let the end go now you need to work out again what is the best way for you to hold it um until i have something to hold on to i do like to suspend the work um sort of on top of my fingers and holding my end of what I'm working down with my thumb so I get a nice and ten nice and even tension and when I'm pulling it through I just pull down on that one and pull it right against my finger again so I'm not letting that naughty thread travel back on my spiral to making it loose but there's many different ways you could hold it. I guess it's really um, a sub to you. You could hold it the other way if you like, just to make it nice and strong. There we are. 
have a slipped. It's another Delica and a bugle bead and I'm gonna miss one and come back. I'm just gonna keep going round and round and round with your pattern. I'm just gonna add a few more stitches and then I'll show you how to attach your end. I love Russian spiral because there is no stepping up. So with some of the stitches like Cellini spiral or netting, you would have to step up when you finish the row before you go to the next row. But with Russian spiral, there is no stepping up. You're doing the same thing over and over again. And just pulling it too nice and tight. The nice... The, I think I suppose the key to this is to keep try to keep a nice and even tension because that's the tension on this is really going to show up on your on your bracelet or necklace you're making afterwards. I just keep going. I'm just going to add a few more stitches and then I'll show you how to add the end. Now you could add a toggle clasp. You could add a anything you like really any clasp like i love the little magnetic clasps because they are quite strong and um they're so easy to take off and to put on i'm just gonna add a few more stitches so we got like a little tail to work with here i hope you can see the beads all right and pulling it up Just keep going through, adding a few more beads. I just want to have sort of a half an inch here so I can show you how to do the end. This de Russian spar is definitely one of my favorite stitches. And just keep adding. And Leslie's saying, can I access a pattern for a necklace made or 20th of July. Um, you can go into the 20th of, if you go onto the, our website where the Facebook tutorials are, um, and if you find the date, we put everything by date for you. You can go into the 20th of July and the pattern should be there. If there was a pattern made up for that day, for that kit, the pattern should be there and available to buy. Um, our pattern starts from 99p to, I guess, about 299 depending on how many pages are, but you can still download it. So just keep going around. Right, I think we got so probably enough, and you can see the nature of the stitch is how it's going around. Um, because you're stitching in the round, it's automatically like twisting itself. And that's what I love about it. It gives you this really nice um, sort of twisted finish. Let me just get the bugle beads out of the way because we're not going to need those anymore. We're just going to need the Delica beads to do our clasp. So what I really want to do is to make my end into a point and more of a triangle so I can add a clasp onto there. Now, as I said, you could add any clasp you like. Um, I'm just gonna grab one of these magnetic clasps. Um, I do like to keep like magnetic clasps like this in my stash and I keep a few different colors because sometimes you don't know what color you're gonna need. Um, you think that perhaps a color will go with your bracelet, but once you make the bracelet up, the proportion of the beads, what you're using can really throw you off and then it's a different color, we go with it much better. So to create a point, what we're gonna do, we need to reduce the, each on each circle, we need to reduce the amount we added there, the amount of beads we will add there to come into a nice little point. So for the next, um, around. I'm not going to add a bugle bead. I'm just going to pick up three of the Delica beads and go through the next bead as I would go through if I added my normal pattern. Can we see that? Shall I bring it a little bit closer? 
and I'm going to repeat this two more times. I mean, you can't really go right or wrong. You just really need to reduce the number of beads you're adding into your circles each, so after each row. And I'm going to repeat it again. So as you can see, once I pull this one through, my bugle beads are going to disappear. And all I can see is just my little delicate beads on the top. Now for my next row, I'm going to reduce this again. And from three, I'm only picking up two now. I'm missing out three of the delicate beads and going through the fourth one. I'm pulling it through and you can already see that we are reducing into a point. Again, picking up another two. Again, I'm going to miss three and go to the fourth one. And you kind of know which one is the fourth one because I'm not sure if I turn it that you can see it. But this fourth bead is slightly sticking out after the three. So you kind of can see which one you need to go through. Pull it nice and tight and I'm going to repeat it for the third time. Again, picking up two seed beads. I'm going to miss three again and go through the one, two, three, the fourth one is that one. And pull it up tight. Now I'm going to reduce the number of beads I'm adding. So you can see this little circle now is even smaller. I'm just going to pick up one delicate bead. I'm going to miss two and go through the third one. So I'm reducing it again. Again, I'm going to pick up one. I'm going to miss two and go through the third one. Pull it up nice and tight. And final, finally, I'm going to pick up my last delicate bead. Again, I'm going to miss two and go through the third one. And on the next row, we're not going to add any more beads. We're just going to sew through the last three beads. What we, have, what we have there, so I'm missing one. I'm going through the one after that. Just slightly turn around, then I'm gonna miss another one, go through the one after that. I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna miss one, and go through the one after that. And then we have our little point Sorry, I didn't miss my bead. Just back up one. Freddy here is keep distracting me. Bless him. I'm gonna open the window wide open to let him out to fly out <laughs> after the video. So we got our little three delicate beads right at the top there. And now I'm gonna go through the loop on my clasp locate which bead you are coming out of and come through that bead again from the other side so you're sewing that loop to your clasp and just pull this up nice and tight then i'm going to go along one bead again and i'm going to go through the loop of the clasp again so what i like to do i like to sew the clasp um to my beadwork maybe four or five times to have a really nice and strong connection. And that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna keep going along to those three beads and sewing them, sewing the clasp to each one of them. So they're sitting nice and straight on the top. Just coming back through this. Now I would go backwards and forwards with this until you know, I'm happy with it. And you can even jump from one side. So I can, as I'm coming out of this bead, I can go through the loop and then jump to the other side and go through a delicate bead on that side. It's really a sub to you. Just go backwards and forwards and make that connection nice and neat and try to sew, you, sew it to your class quite a few times so you have a really nice and strong connection there. And that's it. And can you see, as we were reducing the number of beads, as we were going around the 
we created like a little point here, a little cone at the top of our beading. And then this gives you a really nice and neat connection to the end of your bracelets. I'll show you some of the finished samples here. Really nicely and neatly you can connect it up to. This one, after I went on the three, I added a delicate bead there. It's really, you can just play with it to do whichever connection it works the better for you. I think us designers, we always do, like I certainly do things different by how Sarah would do it. And Sarah sometimes do things different by how I would do it. And I, I sometimes come around to her way and just show you this last one. Sometimes this is one with the uh, little magnetic ones. I love this magnetic as well. It's got this little diamond in it. Oh, hi, Freddy. Freddy's keep coming back. I do really need to open that window to let him out. Um, so that's it. So that's how easy to create a nice and professional finish to the end. And um, we don't really need to cover up our thread pass because don't forget we're matching the thread to our beads. So it's just sort of just gonna disappear there. And I think that's um that's really nice. So that that's it on the Russian spiral one. Now I had another question. I'm gonna cover one more question um today was about elastic strands and we have done quite a few elastic bracelets, but uh, we never really show you the different type of elastics in the same video because we either use one or we use the other. So today I'm going to show you what the difference between the elastic strands and when to use them. So I have these bracelets. This is just um, a hematite rondel and crystal one. I do wear these um, quite a lot because I do like them. So on one of the bracelets, I added more rondels and less crystals. The other ones is the reverse of it. And I like to wear them together. Just sort of have... Um, like a little stacked jewelry. Now this one, because they are heavier beads, you are gonna need a stronger elastic. And with, with a stronger elastic, there is the little knot um, of what we have, you're gonna have a larger knot as well. However, these beads are larger, so the hole on them will be larger as well. Oh, Pamela is asking, who is Freddy? Freddy is a fry, so I really don't know where did it came from, but uh, when Lucy was small, she really didn't like flies. And uh, what happened is, um, I don't know if somebody said it, uh, um, oh, don't worry about, don't worry about the fly, that's only Freddy. And uh, since then, every single fly which just comes into the house is called Freddy, Freddy the fly. And it was sort of made it, I guess, um, a little bit cuter, a little bit easier for she sort of because the fly had a name and um, she wasn't really freaking out <laughs> of the fly afterwards that right so that's that's one type of elastic now the other type of elastic is the flat elastic the flat flossy elastic now this comes in so many different colors actually that's not an elastic this, this one comes in larger rolls as well, the clear and the black. Now, this one is more stretchier than the round elastic, what you've seen on the larger beads. So this elastic is great when you want to do multi-row bracelets where um, you got maybe three, two, three, four um, different um, lines going through your bracelet. And probably you can see this one better because it's the purple one. Um, because it's more stretchy, it's got more giving in there. So it's perfect to use with two whole beads. We had this knit bit curve um, video, I think it was a couple of weeks ago and you really loved it. I love these bracelets again, because they're really nice and easy to wear, very, very comfortable. You don't even feel that it's on your wrist because it's a really nice, soft elastic. Now, we refer to it as uh, flat elastic because of the shape of it, and that's how it is on the website. And we say it's flossy elastic because if I pull this ends apart, you can see this is made up of so many different fibers that um, it just sort of woven and glued together. And that's why it's really nice and strong as well. However, if I used larger beads and heavier beads on this elastic my bracelet as i'm wearing it it would sort of stretch out a little bit and back in let and let uh, stretch out a little bit and back in uh, backwards and forwards so 
it's not ideal to use it with larger beads because the heavier beads won't um, keep the shape with that one. They both got their purpose and they're both good to use for different things. So this one, uh, the flat elastic, I would use it with a big eye needle, which is like we covered this big eye needles plenty of times that you have to have one in your stash. The whole of the needle is an eye and then you can insert your elastic into it and pick your beads up really easy to work with. With the round elastic, you can't use it with a big eye needle because it's a little bit thicker. So this one is 0.8. I haven't got um, the sticker on anymore. This one is 0.8 in the millimeter. We also have 0.6 and one millimeter. So if I'm using really chunky, really large beads, I would use round elastic one millimeter. This one is 0.8, which is but on this bracelet. That's what I use the most, I guess, 0.8. And I would use 0.6 if I'm like working with something smaller, but I still want the strength in the elastic. And this one is not, uh, the round elastic is not as stretchy, it doesn't stretch out as um, far as the, the um, flat elastic. So let me just find the end and undo this as well. And if I put them side by side and they pull both of them, so this is how far it goes out. Sorry, you can't see my hand. This is how far it goes out. Let's look at a smaller section. So this is how far I can pull out with the round elastic together. Now, I'm not gonna move my hand, but I'm gonna let the round elastic go. And you can see, I can pull out the flat elastic twice as far as the round elastic. So it's much more stretchier. Both have different purposes as well. Um, I do have both of them in my stash all the time because um, using them um, for different purposes and with different beads, um, they're really good to have. Now, one thing what I do do, and excuse my messy bag, I store the elastic in a plastic bag or, you know, you can store it in a plastic box as well. Um, I'm storing in a black, uh, just a plastic bag. So it doesn't let the elastic to dry out at all because um, if you've got a reel of elastic and I think this one is quite old now because of the color of it, I can see that it's going a little bit um, more sort of a yellower, uh, a butter creamy color from the clear. And that's how you, can really tell the age of the elastic. And if I just leave this outside, it would over time, I mean, I'm talking about years here, not, not weeks, it would dry out. So always store your elastic in a plastic bag or a, a box, um, tight container, and then it will be over. I think this must be years and years and years old. It will, it will stay fresh and nice for years and years afterwards. Now, knotting your elastic together, and there is really no, um, I guess, people are afraid of that. It's going to come apart. And that little knot, what we created on the top is, you know, you, it's it's going to snap and the, oh, you're going to lose all your beads. Um, usually this happens when you're in the supermarket or in a coffee shop or in somewhere when you least expect it, your knot can come undone and the bleeds will fly everywhere. And um, it did happen to me before. Um, actually, it wasn't. Was in an elastic bracelet um, in one of the supermarkets, and I was there, and I had my hand, my hand, and my knees trying to pick up all the lovely beads uh, from the floor. But never mind, it, it does happen now. To prevent that, so it doesn't happen, or or trying to prolong the life of, of your knot, there is a couple of little things you can do. So I just do a normal reef knot which would be let just add which would be just crossing your ends so imagine you got all the beads on your strand crossing your ends pulling it through one way and then turning it around going the other way and pulling your end through the other way so that's a normal reef knot now let me just put um, something underneath it so you can see it, my hand. So that's a normal reef knot. So when you do a normal reef knot, that's just gonna sort of bite together. And with this one, you need to pull it from the top and you need to pull it from the bracelet side as well. And the elastic is gonna 
got like a little um I don't know how really to explain it to best, but uh, the elastic itself is sort of um, bites together with the other elastic and then your knot is going to be really nice and secure and that's not going to come apart now. That knot is going to stay there. However, if I just do a normal reef knot, um, which is quite small as well, I usually do another half knot on the top of it and then I will apply a tiny bit of glue or a tiny bit of elastic to this knot, this half knot of what I added to the top. And that's how I extra secure my um, elastic. So I do a no normal reef knot and then just add an extra half knot to the top. And when I'm adding the glue or the little bit of the elastic um, to the top, this is why I didn't want to add any of the beads there so you can really see the knot itself because otherwise the knots go around so when i'm adding the glue or the nail varnish to the top so i'm going to take most of the nail varnish off of my brush and i'm going to brush so this is my tail end here i'm just going to brush on the top as you can see i'm not even touching the knot itself i'm just brushing on the top just like that across and I'm letting the nail varnish or the glue seep right on the top of my knot. I don't want the nail varnish or glue all over my knot or especially don't want it below my knot where my beads are because they can make your elastic quite brittle and then it can snap. So you only want it and, and I think I added a bit too much here, but you only want it a little bit of motion. Nail varnish is great because you got that... Um, brush there already take most of it off and just brush it probably about a couple of millimeters above your knot and it will seep down onto the top of it and just let it dry and then the that half a knot what we did at the top will stop the nail varnish completely sleeping seeping down on your strand now you can also do a surgeon's knot and sarah swears about the surgeon's knot so let me just take another piece of elastic and that's quite secure as well so a surgeon knot starts off as a reef knot so you're going to cross your ends you're going to bring one end over the other so we got just sort of a twist over there and then when we're going back to the other side i'm going to cross my ends the other way and then not this way i need to go and i'm going to bring the end through under my loop now this I, I brought it under once now i'm going to bring it that's got to be a normal reef knot to turn it into surgeon's knot all you need to do is to take this end around that loop one more time and you can see at the top we got more of the twisting as we have at the bottom and when you pull this together it just forms a more secure knot on the top as well and that's really nice and secure as well now so there's two ways you can try it. Again, I would take my nail varnish and add a tiny bit right to the top. So I would hold my ends together, my little tail ends together, pull my beads down. Again, take the nail varnish, take most of the nail varnish off of it and just brush it across right at the top there. And as you can see, that little nail varnish is going to seep down and to go to that the top of the knot. I don't want it underneath it. I don't want it on the rest of my bracelet. And uh, that will make your um, knot, I suppose, more secure. And hopefully you won't lose any of your beads that won't snap on you. Now, the other thing what I usually do, let me just get rid of it. Once I made my knot let's find it on this bracelet once i made my knot and if the bead itself got a larger hole on any other side i can quite easily pull this knot which one's got a larger hole maybe this one put that knot into one of my beads and now you can't see the knot at all it disappears and your bracelet is a continuous bracelet let's look at it on this one I think this must be inside the bead already because I can't, I can't see it. I think it's this one because that doesn't slide. So the knot will be inside there. 
really nice and secure and um yeah it's just a, a, a prolonged i suppose the age of your bracelet so they will be nice and longer but that's what, all about it don't be afraid of elastic if you are unsure or if you you know you're not you're not sure what you but how strong you need to do your knots just take some cheap beads perhaps from your pro bundle or any of your bundles make a few bracelets up and wear them wear them for a week or two and test them which method is the best for you which method you can get on the best with so round elastic is for heavier beads larger beads uh, flossy elastic is great for two hole beads or anything um anything where you have to go through one more time because this one is a much more stretchier. Again, your knots are gonna be smaller here and try to pull them into the beads as well, um, just to make them disappear. Um, flossy elastic comes in all sorts of different colors. Round elastic usually only comes in clear color. So they both kind of disappear between the beads. Now to mix the things up, there is, I'm gonna show you one more elastic, which actually we are developing at the moment. And this is a round elastic and it has like a woven fabric over the top of it. So this again is a really nice and strong elastic. And I'm actually in the process of doing some crocheted bracelets with this one. So I'm going to show you. I've got a sample here. I probably shouldn't show you this because this is totally brand new and I'm just working on it. Oh, there we are. I knitted this one up, that, uh, crocheted this one up the other way, but I'm going to do like little crocheted bracelets with the elastic as well. But this is, again, a different type of elastic. So this one has a little fabric over the round elastic inside it. So many different things you can, um, I guess, use. Um, for your elastic bracelets, many different techniques as well. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I could, let me just go back on the comments because I haven't got my lovely little Molly here reading out the comments for um, for me. Um, so Sam, let me just go back and see that if um, anybody has had any questions. Um, can you thread flossy? through cultural pearls if the holes on the pearls are large enough because sometimes with the freshwater pearls you can have um smaller holes that um like you know really tiny ones depending on how they drilled it sometimes they are a little bit larger and you can um thread the elastic through as well but with um cultural pearls they they can be quite expensive so it's depending i suppose on the price that what you want to how, how you want to display them and how you want to add them up so I just needed a sip of my coffee. Um, so that's it. Let me just go back. And um, Camille is saying, thanks, Kitty. Enjoy the sunshines. I will do. Um, I can see some of you are having the conversation, which is out of which I love because I, I think quite a lot of you have found um, little crafty friends and beady friends through the Facebook Live, which I'm so glad because that's all about it. You're like-minded people here trying to do all sorts of different projects. And Margaret saying, sorry, Kitty, my daughter here, but I have saved the demo and we'll catch up later. Yes, you can um, watch the video as back on Facebook as well. If you go into on the Totally Beads uh, Facebook page, click into videos and you can look back um, all the videos we've done. You can also catch the videos on our, our uh, website um, in the Facebook tutorial um, page on our website and then um, go back through the dates, what we've done. Um, there he's got like little pictures as well, what we've been making. And I could just can't believe it. We've been doing this since the sort of the 23rd of March we started. So we've been doing it for months and months and months. I think you've got over 150 videos on there now to sort of catch up and have a look and, and look at all the different things, what we've been doing um over the ha happy celebration somebody's saying um oh alicia's saying thanks to kitty i know how to make the elizabeth bracelets and i intend to wear and show off um oh um the elizabeth one was a very similar to this one it was just used a different um cabochons and different um super duos in there so that was a really nice make as well um, we're seeing, I love making elastic bracelets so easy. Um, 
Diane's saying it always make them too tight and elastic gives too much. I'm trying to do, I, I know that like sometimes people are afraid that if you make your elastic bracelet too much um, or too big, they will roll off. Now, how I measure my elastic bracelets, and I'm going to take this other one off. So for me, the perfect elastic bracelet, when you put it on your wrist and if you jiggle your wrist, and you can see the bracelet slightly moves or slightly moves around, then that's the right side, but um, right size for you to wear. But if it's only a little bit, it moves around. Um, as you can see, these beads are coming up as it's um, twisting around. If it moves, moves a tiny bit, then it's the right size. If it really moves around, then it's too big. And if you jiggle it and it doesn't move at all, then it's too tight. So that's how I measure up um, my elastic bracelets. To what's the perfect and comfortable size as well because don't forget as you flex your wrist this part of your wrist becomes slightly bigger and slightly smaller as well so if you hold it nice and straight that's your relaxed position that's where you want your elastic just to be a tiny bit bigger than your wrist so it's nice and really um, comfortable to wear because if you make it too tight and you flex your wrist, as you can see, that uh, makes it even tighter as well, depending on what you do. Like, you know, if you do beading or if you do any of your crafting, you need to be able to move your bracelet around. Right, so that's it for me. Um, Doris is saying, oh, Kitty, are you still there or have you disappeared? Oh, no, I'm, I'm still here. Um, oh, yeah, who is Freddy? Freddy's a fly, so I'm just going back and catching up. I'm going to go and have a good old look after um, I finish the Facebook Live. And if you had any more questions, I can always answer them later on. Sue is saying, I have enjoyed every demo you have done. I have learned so much from you and Sarah. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. We have enjoyed uh, doing them as well because this is our little sort of, um, you know, at the moment, we're not really going out and we usually have got workshops and we have other bits of pieces going on at the warehouse. But at the moment, we are really sort of shielding from everybody, I guess. Everybody's trying to be very careful. And this is, is been a lifesaver for me because this is my interaction with like-minded crafty people as well. Um, sort of outside of home and outside of work and it just I really enjoyed them and, and Sarah's really enjoyed them as well I enjoyed us like quite relaxed and um, yeah and, and you such a lovely people such a nice bunch um, giving us all these really nice comments so um, thank you as well to following and watching us so that's it um, Thank you so much, Kitty. 105 video as well. I think there is a few more, but some of them you might have not linked. Um, I think it is 23rd of March, so I'm not sure. Until the time, I did follow that how many weeks we were in lockdown and how many weeks to do it. And after, like, when you get over 100, you just, just like, well, doesn't really matter, does it? Um, we keep doing them. Uh, as long as you enjoy it, we will keep doing them. So that's it for me today. Do have a lovely day. Um, I think... We might wander down to the beach with Lucy or do a bit of beading or something in a garden. Um, enjoy the sunshine if it's nice and sunny where you are. And, um, you know, if you've got any other questions next week, is um, Sarah's going to be down and um, um, she's going to do a question and answer next Friday. So if you've got any questions about wire work, any questions about chain mail, please, please, please either email or message it through so we can make a little list and, and then she can answer you different bits of pieces what she's doing or how she's doing give she can give you her expertise um how to deal with different things um obviously if kits are i designed then um i'll i'll do that maybe in a, a couple of weeks after that but we just wanted to try a couple of uh, different facebook live to feed back to you because um you know if you didn't cover something in a facebook live it or perhaps you don't understand something or you're stuck on a step, we can always show you here in a, in a question and answer session. Right, so thank you very much. Do you have a lovely day? And I'll see you tomorrow. Ooh, tomorrow. I love tomorrow. And I have to say thank you very much. Let me just grab the samples. Thank you very much for Brenda because Brenda helped me to make all of these lovely samples up. So look at all of these lovely samples. So we're going to be doing the Renee pendants tomorrow. They are the little mini jewel pendants and we're gonna catch a rivulet inside it. I have put together a couple of, we had the, we had the gold, the silver 
and this sort of coppery color bundle on the website and I have put together another two colorways so one of them is your pink and purples oh, wrong way around pinks and purples and the other colorway is gonna be your aqua blue and green they're both really really nice but we're gonna have a good old play with it tomorrow and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make those pendants so that's it for me today I'll see you tomorrow have a lovely day enjoy the sunshine if you are sunshine if the weather is not too good then enjoy some beading or some crafting indoors as well bye